Oh, shit. Here we go again. Hello everyone, I'm Cool Guy. Welcome back, and today let's talk about this week of Bungie on 516. Uh, there's a lot to talk about on many fronts. Uh, they first start off by saying and talking about Iron Banner. There's gonna be changes to Iron Banner next season, and they'll give more details later on. But the main content in the article is about the dev team and talking about Sandbox with Season of Opulence coming up. And they wanted to let us know what to expect from the new Sandbox so we can plan accordingly. As we know, June 4th, we have a Day 1 raid, and they say that several notable weapons are being adjusted. They want to ensure that encounters, raids, and other in-game content, for example, remain a challenge. And I do see where they're coming from with this, but I have a lot to add on to it. Some of these weapons have been overwhelming challenges. And their first choice is to buff underused exotics and underused weapons, but if they continue to push every weapon up higher and higher, it's going to remain impossible to maintain challenging experiences. And some of the things they talk about isn't a full list of changes, but they're some of the most impactful. So to me, it's starting to get to a point where, yeah, they're very strong, the ones that we're getting ready to talk about, that they're having issues creating activities around the weapons, instead of creating weapons around the activities. Does that make sense? They first start off with Whisper of the Worm. They say it's been adjusted in Season of the Drifter, but it's an exotic that can generate infinite ammo. And that outlier renders many weapons irrelevant for certain encounters. And we'll stop here for a sec. I mean, it might be just me, it might be more of the player base, but I would like Heavy Sense back. The raid banners are nice, but I really miss those. Especially in certain areas of encounters where you do need that extra damage and bricks just simply won't fall for you. And they continue with Whisper bypassing the ammo economy. It tends to force them to adjust enemies to compensate. And maybe now we're starting to get to the root of some of the issues. They say this effectively results in sniper rifles as a whole being punished because of Whisper's unique ammo ability. And they say as a result, they're removing the ammo regeneration ability so they can increase the effectiveness of all snipers that don't have an endless ammo supply. So White Now now pulls from reserves rather than creating it, and your reserves are increased to 18. And that's without any ammo reserve perks on. So that's a big one. Whisper is a huge part of damage phases in DPS. We have Sleeper Sim. They say the reduction of bounce shot damage for Sleeper Simulant is already present on several important enemies, and we're now making this reduction part of the weapon. The difference in damage is too large between a single precision shot of Sleeper and then getting an angled shot that pierces the target and also other targets again, again with bounce projectiles. And they say with Whisper, we had to adjust enemies around that potential. By making these changes a permanent part of the weapon, we can get more of a balanced position. So they reduced ricochet bounce damage on boss combatants and modified the precision behavior. The total damage is unchanged, but non-precision shots are slightly more forgiving. They go into Lord of Wolves. It received a massive increase of damage with the full benefits of the shotgun changes with Season of the Drifter. This made it more popular, yes, but they got significant feedback about release of the wolves activating on every kill, made it hard to control, and the weapon's ammo consumption. They say now, as a result, we're allowing you to swap between the two states to control the output. So PvE damage has been reduced by 20%. Release of wolves no longer triggers automatically on a kill. You now have to hold the reload button, kind of like you can do with Borealis or Hardlight. So, so far we have a couple weapons here and they admitted that they were having to make encounters around these weapons. So if I think of it like that, I kind of understand where they're coming from, but I do have more thoughts on this. Let's get into Ace of Spades. They say Ace of Spades is pretty hot in the Crucible and it has been since the inclusion in Destiny 2's Forsaken. The number of perks on the weapon combined with the semi-permanent effects of Memento Mori gives the weapon too many advantages compared to other weapons. Now that Memento Mori ends when you steal the weapon, you'll need to make a decision on whether or not you want to keep this weapon drawn to retain the bonuses. So Memento Mori now ends if the weapon is stowed. The PvP damage bonus for Memento Mori was slightly reduced to prevent two tapping guardians with vengeance, with the one-eyed mask perk active. Specifically, you need four resilience to survive this, but Memento Mori is active for six shots again, up from five. So I'm gonna stop right here. Ace of Spades isn't only one of the best PvP weapons in the game, it's one of the best weapons in the entire game. What was nice about Ace is you could stow the weapon, bring out your shotgun if you need to, to defend yourself in the Crucible, bring the ace back out and still have the damage. But I'm okay with this. It's pretty much saying you use ace of spades as a primary, you get reactive reload, and that's essentially what it is. It's kill clip, it's reactive reload, but it stays on as long as you have the weapon out. That's still very powerful on a weapon. But what I do not agree with, the PvP damage bonus of Memento Mori was slightly reduced to prevent two tapping guardians with vengeance. That isn't an ace of spades problem. That's a one-eyed mask problem. That's one helmet on one character. I don't know how many total exotics are in their game, 60, 70, and the overall damage of a weapon is reduced because of one exotic helmet for one character. That's something I can't really get my head around. Bottom Tree Striker with Frontal Assault could probably still two-tap even though it's nerfed, so like two-tapping is always going to be a thing. You could two-tap with Kindled Orchid that has Kill Clip and Rampage. But I don't agree that you nerf the entire damage 
get the overall effect that you're looking for, it specifically revolves around one-eyed mask. Like that's a one-eyed mask problem, not an ace of spades problem. So now every character, no matter what exotic they're using, it's not doing 93 that it was doing before because of one-eyed mask. So I don't agree with that. Tell me what you guys think of that. Let's move on to exotic armor. They say, primarily we're paying attention to pieces of exotic armor that grant back super energy. They feel like they're must pick gear now at this point. So orb regeneration from teammates has always been the best way to accelerate your super generation. These exotics are allowing players to bypass this teamwork mechanic by generating a large amount of super energy without relying on players orbs. And honestly, super mods are really what players rely on. So I'm reading and going through this. So forgive me if I don't have the exact terms, but a, a base super is four minutes, 58 seconds. So you have a basic 10 minute match. That's going to get you two supers just without doing anything. Like if you're just sitting there. If you have on super mods, your super duration is now 3 minutes and 32 seconds, so almost 3 supers per game. Then we have add-on perks like pump action, so I've been on a Spectre Blades Hunter using Chaperone, using 5 super mods, getting headshots with Chaperone, and I've gotten a super in about a minute and 15 seconds. And uh, and honestly, I, I really hope that they do look at super mods. Super mods are, are the, are the must-pick option, right? If you're not running super mods in PvP, it's not only a disservice to yourself, but your entire team, especially in comp. As more of a PvP player, I mean, I look at some of the other things, yeah, it's nice to have a little bit extra mobility every now and then, maybe resilience, but nothing equals the benefit of adding super mods. And they say also because these items are so overwhelmingly strong in situations where players face off against a large number of enemies, some activities were designed considering that players are going to be using Orpheus Rigs, Phoenix Protocol, Skull of Dire Ahamkara. This means that if your fire team doesn't have one of these exotics equipped, the activity becomes way more difficult. We're trying to make changes to these armor pieces to try to preserve their power fantasy and still leave them a viable choice for different activities. And this is without making players feel like they must have them equipped or they're going to be at a huge disadvantage. So Skull of Dire Ahamkara, Orpheus Riggs, and Phoenix Protocol now receive super energy back with diminishing returns, making it rarer to get a full super back. Shards of Galanor and Ursa Furiosa had their super gain caps reduced to be in parity with other super exotic changes. The Gwizen Vest had its energy reduced from 50% to 8% for killing 1-2 to two Guardians, and it still scales up similar to before when killing 3 or more Guardians, and PvE energy return remains similar to before. They say that they're sympathetic about the fact that the changes we make in the interest of balancing combat and in-game design can be jarring. It was important to have this conversation before you read the actual patch notes. We know a lot of you have a lot riding on day one season of Opulence. Hopefully this intel will assist you in building the perfect monster killing machines for the next season of play. So to be completely honest, we do have set in stone exotics. When I play Night Stalker, it is top tree with Orpheus Riggs. That's exactly what I'm doing every single time. And it's been that way since so honestly Vanilla Destiny. When I'm on Gunslinger, I'm using the Celestial Nighthawk. When I'm a Voidwalker, Skull of Dire Ahamkara. When I'm a Dawnblade, use the Well with the Phoenix Protocol. So I'm personally set in my ways, and I know a lot of players are too. And those are mostly used in PvE activities because of that super return, yes. The super is some of the best damage you can do in any activity. But just because you're nerfing the Skull of Dire, Amkara, Shards of Galanor, Phoenix Protocol, things like that, that doesn't make the Mechaner's Trick Sleeves a go-to now. That doesn't make Lucky Raspberry, Wings of Sacred Dawn, Gemini Jester, Kepri's Horm, I Have Another World, any of them better. So while yes, it's nerfed in that capacity, but they're still going to be used because nothing else is going to take its place. So they started off by saying that they always want to buff first, but something is so strong they sometimes have to nerf. Well, since you nerf these, that's okay, but some of these lesser used things aren't used for a reason. With these nerfs, all of these other things need to be buffed in some way. Not all of them maybe, but some of them. You could even add things that were in Destiny 1. All the Aclifage symbiote did for Destiny 1 Gunslingers would add an extra Golden Gun shot. You could do that to Knucklehead Radar. You could add that to Foe Tracer. And real quick before we get back into it, let's just close out. They talk about the Trevor t-shirt. I will be getting that because that's awesome. And of course, there's a couple of the movies of the week. There's a link in the description to the full This Week at Bungie if you guys do want to check it out. But I really do hope that there's more to go along with this. I really do hope that... The pinnacle weapons that they come out with each season are going to be just as good. I really hope that the new exotics they come out with are going to be just as good. And with the nerfs to these, I really hope others are getting buffed, man. And they kind of hinted throughout it, like they said, the Whisper is so strong, all snipers got nerfed. So possibly base legendary sniper is going to get a damage buff or, or a flinch reduction, something like that. But I want to hear your guys' thoughts on it. The only thing I completely disagree with is the precision damage to Memento Mori in PvP because of One-Eyed Mask. I mean, come on. That's a One-Eyed Mask thing. That's not a Memento Mori thing. So I don't really agree with that. That's, that's my main one. But I want to hear your thoughts. Now is your time. Thank you guys for watching. And until the next one, I am Cool Guy.